additions and multiplication that we go backwards doing. You don't have to worry too much about it. Um, so now we have, we found a little bit better weights, and now we're going to go back again with those new weights. You see, we got closer this time. So I did this first round on paper, like four sheets of paper. Um, it would take a really long time to do all that manually, so that's why it's great we have computers. That's why neural networks are possible now, is we have such fast computers that can compute this uh, 10,000 times in like less than a second. And when I did that, um, it got to be like 0 0.0000000009. So, you know, at some point you just tell it to stop. You don't need to do it a million times because at 10,000 times we're getting close enough to zero. So when you're adjusting the weights, how yeah. do you, uh, what exactly are you using there? So it's based off of how far off we were that first time. So are you just like changing the figures or what, like the... Yeah, I mean, I can go back and look at this. That's what kind of going through it. So like when we when we were going back, we're we're gonna find just the derivative of this activation function. So I know like derivative kind of freaks people out sometimes, but you really can just do it in a calculator. Just plug it in. Um, and um, yeah, I can let's see. I don't have a graph of that, but you remember? Did you take calculus? Yeah. So, you, so derivative just means like the rate of change, like the slope of a line, right? So we're able to find what the slope of this line was of our S curve, of where it was when we hit that output sum, and then we can adjust it. So you know, like making the S curve, sorry, like you know more flat or more steep. So we're gradually using that to adjust it. If you want to later, you could go through and calculate all of this, and I will give you a gold star. <coughs> it also would be, I think, really great for you guys to look at. I have the slides, you can look at it later, and maybe try to do the math, and then maybe try to teach someone else, like your spouse or your partner or your little brother. <laughs> because this is why I'm doing this, because teaching this to you guys helps me learn this a lot better. This is just the sort of demonstration of how as you add more neurons to the network, it can be able to find more complicated patterns in the data. So you can see like if this was trying to classify like red versus green, just a really simple network is only going to get some of them, it's going to miss these. And then we add more and it can get these really cool complicated patterns. So I think, oh I do have a, so this is like the sigmoid I was talking about, just an S-shaped curve, and you can see in 3D that it's representing like all of these data points here, um, versus the linear, which is gonna miss a lot of the complexity of the patterns. And then another really common used function in neural networks is just a, a tangent one. So the reason that I really wanted to share this with you guys is that you are all supporting the research team as they are developing these neural networks for hows. Um, a lot of you have been working on training data, labeling things, classifying things into categories or facets. They'll be able to use all of that to you know, make this so that we can, in the future, have computers do a lot of the tedious work that you guys do, and you can move on to doing more complex and more creative kind of tasks. And this allows us to be able to handle a lot more data. We can't just you know, keep hiring more and more and more people and training more and more people. So you guys are the best. <laughs> you are what makes House such a great site. If we didn't have data ops, it would just be like a massive spam, you know, just really low quality stuff. So any questions anyone has? Where can we find more? Yes! <laughs> yeah. I will send you a couple of links that have some more examples, instructions. Yeah. Um, what else? Would, also, you know, I think it's important that you guys kind of have some idea of what research team is doing, so that as you go forward and you meet other people, your like friends or family, and they, you know, you, they ask you about hows, you can talk about it intelligently, and you can say, yeah, like we're doing all this cool deep learning, and 
I got to take a class on it. And yeah, I help support the team that's doing that. And you know, it's just so awesome. Instead of just having no idea and being like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, it's definitely okay. nice to see what how um, all this data translates to like teaching or yeah. Like, um, AI. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can show you. I have I have some code. Not good. Um, this one. This is whoa. Okay. This is a very simple neural network. It just takes nine lines of code. This would be one that only has one neuron. So this is this kind of a one neuron neural network is called a perceptron. It's just a simple term. Uh, the first thing that it does is from NumPy, it imports the math kind of functions. <laughs> so in like this is this is called Python code. And we can define functions in here that we actually write in code, but it's also really handy. We can use other people's functions that they have already created. So people have already defined like that exp is e to the x. We don't have to rewrite that. So I'm just importing some, some of these math functions. Um, and then I'm going to give it the training set, which is just you know those number patterns we talked about with the labeled output. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, and then we're, this is the random part. It's going to assign those random weights. Uh, it says dot C. That just makes it so every time I run it, it starts with the same random numbers so that I can train it um, in a more consistent way. And um, then we're just kind of defining the functions of how all of those steps work, of how we're going to define the weights and how then we're going to do 10,000 times. We're going to go through and apply all of those. You know, we had those like four steps. So we went forward and then three steps, we went back adjusting the weights. Um, and then let's see if I can just run this for you. So in terms of facets, like what we like when you say adjusting the weights, that's kind of part of what we're You guys are just preparing the training data. Right. What you guys are doing. But like you know how we talked about like, oh maybe this should have more weights than certain things. That's no, because currently the facets do not use a neural network. They use a more of a rule-based kind of a system. But you know, eventually we may be able to do that. So this is, if you guys haven't seen this before, this is just called the terminal. Um, and it's running Unix, which is another operating system that will let us speak directly to the kernel of our computer. So I've just navigated into the folder where I have that file that I showed you stored. And then I'm going to tell it to use Python and to run this file. Tell it its name. Oh, sorry. And one up. All right, so it ran, it just ran that whole mathematical procedure 10,000 times, and it predicts that the pattern for this would be very, very close to one. So, pretty good. Thank you, guys. And if you have any more questions, if you're interested in learning more, you know where I am.